If you think the map range node is just a worse version of the color ramp, then this video is for you. I'm not bashing the color ramp at all, they both have their use cases and can do things that the other can't. Here's a brief summary of what I'll go over in this video. I'll start off by comparing the visual differences between the color ramp and the map range node. This is the kind of stuff that would be useful for making roughness maps and stuff like that. Then I'll do my best to explain the math behind the map range node and talk about interpolation and clamping with some cool displacement examples. I'm not a math person, so hopefully I don't butcher this. Then I'll finish up with showing you how to use the map range node with multiple colors like you would with the color ramp. All right, let's get started. So if you want to use the map range the same way you would use the color ramp, treat the from values like the position of these two flags and treat the two values as if you're coming in here and just changing the value like that. And just to give an example, I'll take this black flag right here and set the position to 0.5 and I'll do the same thing over here. And you can see they're exactly the same right now. And if I take our black flag again and just change the value to something like 0.1, you can see it turns kind of gray over here like that. And if we change the two min value right here to 0.1 and compare the two, they're going to look exactly the same. So once again, I treat the from values like the position of these two, and I treat the two values as if you're changing the color like that. I think a lot of people have an easier time understanding the color ramp because visually it makes more sense. Say, for instance, you want more black in your noise texture right here, you can pull this black slider up right here and now you visually have more black in this bar right here and you have more black over here too so it's easier to understand visually and if you want more white you just have to move the white slider and then when you look over here your texture is more white and the transition between the two is just smaller the same way like it is on this graph right here so when this is clamped um, it works pretty much the same way. The closer these two are together, the smaller the transition between the two visually. But one nice thing about the map range is that you have all of these inputs and you can control them externally, whereas the color ramp you don't. You just have this one input right there. So to give an example, I'm going to add in a value node and a math node. I'll plug the value into the from minimum, then I'll plug this into the add node and the add node into the from max. So basically what's happening here is this value node is going to be the position of this black flag right here. And this add node is controlling how far away the white flag is from the black node. So basically, this add node right here is just the distance between these two flags right there. And when I change one, it's going to change both like that. So if I wanted these two values to be really close to each other, so it visually looks sharp, I would just have to change this to a small number like 0.1. And now when I move this, it's as if I am moving this and the white flag is following it. And so they're always staying the same distance from each other just by moving this one value node. And this is something I actually use a lot for uh, roughness maps. So basically I can control the maximum and minimum roughness with these two values right here, similar to how you would just change these colors like that. So if I want our roughness to not go all the way up to, to one, I could change this to like, 0.3 or something like that and then I can control the transition between the two so right now we have a pretty sharp transition I could make it even sharper like 0 0.001 and now it almost looks like it's just on or off uh, if I want a more gradual transition I could change this to like a 0.5 and then you can control just the balance of these two colors by changing this so you can see when I turn this up then there's more of the low value when I turn it down there's more of the the high roughness if you wanted to do the same thing with the color ramp, every time you move this, you have to move this also. If you want to use the color ramp and the map range interchangeably, make sure you leave this clamped. We'll talk more about clamping a little later. One thing that the color ramp offers that the map range doesn't is actually the ability to change color beyond grayscale. So I could change this to like red and blue or something like that. Uh, and you can also add multiple stops in here to add multiple colors. It also gives you some uh, interpolation modes that the map range doesn't have. And we'll talk more about this later when we get into displacement. And you also have this section right here that allows you to change from RGB to HSV or HSL. And when you do that, it gives you um, some more interpolation modes. And basically the way I understand these is if it's set to near, it's going to find the nearest root between these two. And what I mean by that is we have red and we have blue right here, and it's just going to take this root right here, and if we set this to far, now we have these other colors in between, it's going to take this root. 
and you can visually see that those other colors are in there too and it's just following that same route. You have uh, clockwise and counterclockwise. Basically, it's, just, it's not going to look at how close they are and just go in one direction. All right, this next part, I'm going to try to explain the math end a little bit. And so right now I just have my plane again, and I have a gradient texture on it, a spherical gradient texture, where the middle of the gradient equals one or white, and the edge, the lowest point, is black or uh, with a value of zero. So when you displace it, it'll, it'll look like this. And I set up these backgrounds so that each of these squares equals one. Uh, the blue is positive and the red is negative. So where they meet, that would be zero. You know, this would be one unit and this would be negative one. And I'm going to use this to explain um, how the math works behind the map range. And once again, I don't consider myself to be a math person. So hopefully I don't mess this up. If I explain any of this wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments below. So I like to think about the froms, like the starting value, and the twos, like the ending value. So you can see right now they have the same values. They have the same distance. They both have a distance of one. So you can think of this kind of like a ratio, like one to one. They're both the same size. But if I make this something larger, like two, now the distance between zero and one is one, and the distance from zero to two is two. So it's like telling it to double in size. And you can see that right now our plane is twice the size it was before. Instead of going from 0 to 1, it's going from 0 to 2. And this works when you go the other way too, so if you wanted it to be half as big, you could change this to 0.5. And this works the other way around too, so if we change this to 2 right here, the distance between these is 2, and the distance between these is 1. So it's like saying start with a value of 2 and then half. So now you can see this is half the size. And when we talk about clamping, you can see if I turn this up like this, that it's getting cut off right here and when I unclamp it it continues like that. So basically when this is clamped it's using these values right here and saying don't go up, uh, below the minimum and don't go above the maximum. So you can see even though this wants to go above one it's cutting it off instead to stay at this value right here. So if we change this value it will allow us to go above so I set this to 2, and now it's treating the maximum like 2, like that. It's just clamping it. But it's also kind of distorting our plane right here, uh, because the distance between these two is different now. So when you unclamp this, it won't stop any of the values from uh, going through, and it'll just keep continuing. And this is something that is pretty important when you're using the map range for math, or for something like displacement, where you want negative values to come through. So most textures, like the gradient texture, they keep their values between 0 and 1, but there is an example of one texture that doesn't, and that's the Musgrave texture. So like I said before, normally when you see black, that would be a value of 0, but if it goes into the negative, you can't visually really see a difference, um, because going lower than 0 will still just look black. So when we're using the Musgrave for displacement, you can see that it does actually have negative values. Like I said, uh, where the red and the blue meet, that would be 0. So the Musgrave by default goes from negative 1 to uh, positive 1, and the midpoint is 0. And so if we run this through the map range node while it's clamped, you can see that it cuts off all of the negative values and just leaves it flat right here. And when we unclamp it, it lets them through. And so as far as I know, clamping is something that happens at the end. And I know that because if it happened at the beginning, if it just didn't let negative values come through right here, then all of the negative information would be lost. But if I move this up like this, you can see that it lets us view the negative information as long as we move it. And so I'm pretty sure clamping happens at the end. It doesn't actually destroy any information. It just kind of stops it from leaving and restricts it to uh, this range right here. So a big difference between the color ramp and the map range is that you can't unclamp the color ramp um, it just won't let negative values leave. You can even come in here and try to type in negative 1, and it just won't accept it. It does allow you to input numbers higher than 1. It won't let you scroll, but if you type in 2, it will stretch like that, and it will let a value of 2 come in here. But pretty much I'd say you probably shouldn't really use a color ramp for math because it's going to prohibit you from doing anything in the negative range. So let's talk about interpolation now. This is something that is going to be easy to see when you're using displacement um, and would be important for something like a bump map. So when we have this set to linear, you see it's going from 0 to 1, and it's just 
taking a straight line so it's kind of pointy at the top. When we change this to stepped linear, you can see it's going up and sideways like that. And we have this right now set to uh, four. So it's taking four steps. You can just count them one, two, three, four. There are four steps. We change this. It's just always going to equal um, however many steps we put in here. And if we look at this without displacement, this is what the texture would actually look like. You can see it's hard edge with no gradation, no transition like that. And this could be really good for something like a tune shader and other non-photoreal textures. So you can see with smooth step, instead of just taking a straight line from zero to one, it is a more gradual transition. And smooth step and smoother step are really similar. You can see that smoother step, it's just more gradual right here. And if you look at the slope, you can start to notice the difference. If you're using this for texturing, you can see the difference. Um, it just kind of looks more like, I mean, I, I would use the word smooth, kind of like airbrushed, but it's a lot easier to notice when you're using this for like a bump map or displacement. So the color ramp also has linear and it's the same as the linear for the map range. It has cardinal, which is kind of like smooth step. You can see it starts off smooth, but it doesn't go, um, straight like horizontal it kind of starts at an angle then we have ease which as far as i know is the same as smooth step i don't see any difference visually then we have b spline which is very smooth and if you look at this graph right here it doesn't actually hit its target point it kind of like overshoots it so we don't get pure black until like right over here I don't usually use this for displacement because uh, it kind of lacks control and I get these weird artifacts too. I find this more useful for actually like blending colors. And then finally we have constant, which is similar to stepped linear, uh, except there's, there's no gradation at all. There's no transition between the two. It's just sharp. And you could get a similar effect as stepped linear over here if you just change this to linear and start adding stops in here like this. And then you change it to constant like that. And then you could also arrange this uh, distribute stops from left like that. And now they're all evenly spaced. If you're trying to have more control with uh, displacement or bump mapping, um, I would recommend using RGB curves or vector curves. I usually use RGB curves for this. You can pretty much just drop it in and draw um, the shape that you want right here. So if you wanted it to be like completely smooth, like a bubble, you can do it like this, or if you wanted it pointy but curved, you could do it like that. And it's pretty much just matching this shape right here. Um, and you can just kind of draw whatever shapes you want. Um, and you can even come in here and change these handles to be sharp vector handle like that. So now this one's sharp. But similar to the color ramp, it doesn't have that many inputs right here for you. So you can't control any of these points from the outside. So here's a situation where I am just using a Voronoi texture to create a bunch of spikes. And when we have this set to smoother step, you can see these are just like smooth mounds. We change it to smoother step. Um, there's a slightly smoother transition right here when it first starts. If we change this to linear, it now looks like a bunch of sharp spikes. And this also works for bump mapping if we're not um, using displacement. So you can see these look pretty sharp right here. But if we change it to smoother step, um, now these look a lot smoother. And once again, if you want more control, just add in an RGB curves. You can use that either instead or in addition to right here. So I would change this to linear so it's not uh, distorting it twice. So if you wanted something a little more like bubble wrap, you could use a shape like this. You can just adjust the strength of your bump right here. And here's what it would look like with displacement. All right, so this part, I'm going to explain how you can use multiple colors like this, but with the map range node and use it similar to the way you would use the color ramp node. So for this, I'm just using this noise texture right here and I'm running it through the color ramp and I have these three stops. One is red, blue, and white. And I just have these at position uh, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0.6. So I'm gonna show you how to first use the map range with just two colors. Um, and this is pretty easy. Uh, it's pretty much just two nodes. I usually use the map range and the mix RGB for this. And you can just plug the result of this into the factor. And then your black value would be color one and your white value would be color two. So I could just change this to red and this one to blue like that. And then if you wanted them to be sharper, you could just do like 0.5 and 0.6 like that. 
and this is how you would use two colors. So when I switch to three colors, this starts to get a little more complicated, but it's not too hard. Basically, you're just going to want another map range and another mix RGB. Make sure that your texture is plugged into the value, just like your one above. You can plug the result into the factor, just like this one right here. And this mix RGB, you're going to plug into color two of the one above it like that. And then these would be your three colors. So I'm just going to hover over control C and control V to paste that color. And I'll change this one to white like that. And to make this easier to control, I'm going to add three value nodes like this, like that. And these are going to be the positions of these stops, just like we have up here. So we had 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and 0 0.6. So I'll put 0.4. This one's already at 0 0.5, and I'll change this to 0.6. Okay. So I'm going to use this for our um, minimum value right here. And the 0.5 is going to be our maximum. So the maximum here is always going to be the minimum right here. So I'll plug that in here like that. So where the range of this one stops, this one begins, if that makes any sense. And then I can just plug our last value into the from max. For this example, I'm going to ignore the two values just like entirely. So don't even worry about changing these values at all. So now that we have this set up, we can compare these two right here. And I made sure that the colors I'm using here are the same colors that I'm using here. And when we compare them, they're exactly the same. And this is also because we have it set to linear here. If you set this to ease, you would have to come through here and set all of these to smooth step like that. And when we compare them, now it's the same as if we were set, setting it to ease. So if you wanted to add more colors, you would pretty much just repeat the steps that I took before by duplicating it like this, making sure this mix RGB is going into color two of the one above it. I can change this color to something different. I'll just change it to like yellow or something. You want to make sure that your texture is plugged into this third one right here. I'm going to change all these back to linear. And you want to make sure you have the same amount of value nodes as you do colors. And like I said before, where the range ends of this one, the range will begin with this one. So, so it's going to share one value right here. The from max of this one is going to be the from min of this one. And then we can use this for the last value right there from max. And I'll just change this to 0.7. And so now we have four colors. One problem with this is that these have to be in order from smallest to largest. Um, and if they overlap, um, it starts to not work like that. So just remember that you have to keep these going from small to large like that. If you wanted to, you could uh, turn this into a group node. Basically, what I would do is um, make sure you're using Node Wrangler for this. You can go to Preferences add-ons and then type in node wrangler and just make sure this is enabled and when you have that you can shift and right click to create reroute nodes like this so i'm going to do that for all of the values and i'm also going to do that for this texture input right there and then just select all these nodes including those reroute nodes we just made when you have them selected hit Control g to group them like this and then you can hit N in the, to open up the side panel to change these values around the fields. And you can rename them and stuff like that. You can also uh, plug these into the colors so that you can control the colors from the outside also. And what I like to do is just line the colors up so that they're next to the value that um, is controlling them. I like to make sure that these are all clean in here. I just removed the reroute nodes. And I'm just going to go through here and rename some. And so now this is what it would look like from the outside. And you can control all the colors and the positions of each color. All right, that's it for this one. I hope I did a decent job explaining how these work. If you'd like to download the node group I made at the end, you can get it for free on Gumroad, along with some other free node groups that I made. If you find them useful, consider giving a donation or a rating. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.